So I had a couple questions with regards to Capto. So I want to go through something that's uh, fairly unique to Capto, but also something that gives you an idea on some basic things. So we're going to talk about face angle and we're going to talk about the path for a second here and how those things are created, how they're results of other things. So first of all, face angle, we can see that I brought this putter face 1.5 degrees open at impact. Now I had a chalk line on, my on the ground. I also had my foresight quad reading the putter and the foresight quad said I brought the putter back at 0.1 degrees open. Now, not to say that the values are different, but Capto in free mode, as we can see down here, when, when you put the putter down on the ground, it assumes that you're aiming square. So I know that I brought my putter face back square. So what it does is it tells me that I had that club face 1.5 degrees closed at setup. A really cool way to reverse engineer where you were aiming the putter based on how it came back at impact if you've got something that's a, uh, a predictor or a standard that's on the ground like a chalk line or, or a sticker or a coin that's on your line just to let you know did you hit the line you chose. I did. So 1.5 degrees open means that I was about 1.5 degrees closed at setup. Something kind of cool. So as I dig into this, we can see that the blue line, which represents my putting, my, 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 the putter face, the face angle through the stroke, we can see that it progressively gets more and more open to the green line, which is the ideal. And as I go into transition, I'm almost at the maximum point or the, the point of maximum opening relative to the, the ideal, the optimum, where you can see here that the optimal face is 3.8 degrees open, but I'm 6.5. So I'm almost double what I should be. But as I continue on in the stroke, we can see that it gets a little bit bigger. Right here, it gets the most, 2.9 degrees open relative to the ideal. So there's something within my, my lag, and when I watch my swing on video and all the stuff that I feel, I can see this as being legitimate. So we can see that the blue line then returns back to impact at the 1.5 degrees open. So my putting, my putter face is open relative to the ideal situation. So if I look at how that green line is created, we're going to jump into the 3D motion, which is something unique to Capto. So the 3D motion represents the putt plane, which is right here. That's the green putt plane line. And the putt plane has a kernel, which is in the middle, which is kind of the nucleus of the putting stroke. This is the center of all of the rotations, where we're the center of where we're applying our forces and torques in the putting stroke, or as Capto calls it, handling and trembling. So when we connect the dots between the kernel and the sweet spot, we come up with a plane line, and that plane line, as we can see here, has a putt plane of 21.8 degrees, so about 22 degrees. So 22 degrees relative to the, uh, to the vertical, 22 degrees relative to the vertical, what that's gonna show us is that when that's represented on the ground down here, it therefore shows us the path of the putting stroke. So when I'm looking at the path itself, we can see that my path kinda goes out a little bit like this, and then it cuts back across the ball, but when I start looking at you know, the, the path relative to the ground, when I start looking at these numbers here, we can see that my angle at 22 degrees is my ideal putting radi my ideal putting arc for my stroke. So my stroke itself should be at a opening and a closing factor of, um, of a radius of 22 degrees. So that's how it's projected on the ground. So when I have that 22 degree radius, that's going to mean that my green line here of how much the face should open relative to the path is going to be, I'm going to have a little bit more of a hill here than say if I was 10 degrees on my arc. If it was 10 degrees on the arc, that green line wouldn't show so much variance from the white line being zero. Now, I open the club face more than the green line, so I'm actually opening the face and closing the face at a faster rate than the ideal. So my rotational values are high. So when I'm able to understand how I power the stroke, right, based on my forces and torques, based on the handling and trembling, the creation of the kernel, which therefore creates the putt plane um, on the ground, we can kind of zoom in a little bit here and we can see it as it relates to on the ground, we can see that not only does the, the putt plane create like a 3D motion along the ground here, let's get rid of the sweet spot plane so we can see it, creates a 3D line along the ground, but it also shows that I take the putter back a little bit outside and a little bit inside. So this line itself, this hula hoop, based on my target line, is angled a little bit to the right. So you can see the white line on the ground, represented by the target line, and then there's the horizontal baseline of the stroke, as we call it here, is track. So it's pointed a little bit left. So we can see that when I go back to my track, we can see that the circle is actually aimed a little bit left of the line, so I take it back a little bit outside and I cut across a little bit more than normal, strictly because the track itself, or that horizontal baseline, is a little bit 
uh, angled relative to the target line. So when I'm able to understand where where the kernel is, the size of it, what represents a tighter motion, and how it creates that putt plane, I can there, therefore understand the uh, the path of my stroke, how that path has been created. It's not just created by how my hands move, it's way deeper than that. But once the path is created, then it tells me the ideal amount of face rotation throughout that path based on how I stroke the putt. So these are unique values to Capto, and they're ways for the coach to identify how the player powers the putter, but then what the resultant path and face angles are relative to how we do it. So it's something that gets in really deep, but when we start looking at all the depth of Capto, all the things that Capto can provide of, of what the player's doing to the grip of the putter, we can start to see that the face, the path, the angle of attack, the amount of loft we deliver in the lie is just a result of what we're doing. I mean, those are the things that are really, that are influencing the ball the most, but what Capto can show us is what's influencing the putter the most. So it takes another level back. And that's why I love Capto, and that's why my golf IQ has gone up when it comes to putting since I've got this awesome educational tool. So if you have any questions on Capto, please reach out to me. I'm happy to help out and help you golf instructors that own it to get a little bit better with your putting IQ.